It's your boy, Kurt Test 7. Welcome to the 7 Show, lads. What a massive week it's been in Premier League football. In football or general, lads. Yep. But uh, let's introduce my guest. We've got Christopher, the big scouser himself. Say hello to the people. Hello, everybody. Go Balotelli. <laughs> All right, now we've got Edgar, the huge Man United fan. And again, we're both disappointed, yes, mate. mate. It's another week, another <sighs> bad result. Yes, and uh, you guys can follow these guys on Twitter. Their links are going to be in the description. All right, lads, it's been a massive, massive week's not just results, but signings as well. Mm. Um, we're going to get to the signings of Angel Di Maria and Mario Balotelli and a few other ones as well. But first things first, lads, let's talk about the results. Yep. The games that mattered over the weekend. And uh, first game of the weekend, lads, was Aston Villa and Newcastle. A nil all draw, but very entertaining in my opinion. I want, I want those 90 minutes back. Yeah. <laughs> in my opinion, shocking. All right, all right, all right. We'll move on, we'll move on. All right, because you guys... There's, there's nothing to say. There's 2 <laughs> All right, Chelsea, their first home game of the season. 2-0 uh, victory over Leicester. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I only got to see the highlights, but um, in the highlights, Leicester didn't look too bad. Um Looked yeah, like they were getting about. Well, I watched all 90 minutes, and Leicester were impressive, especially... Nugent missed that... Chance, yeah, he, one, yeah, he one. did. Yeah, he should have put that away. He should have put that mm. away. But in saying that, the f- opening half an hour, it was all Leicester. Chelsea were on the back foot. Mm. And Aspilicueta keeps uh, Felipe Luiz out the squad again. Yeah. Yeah. I was surprised with that one. That was really surprising for me. Yeah, for me, I think it's just a case of job done for Chelsea. Three points, two goals, clean sheet. Good yeah. enough. In terms of Luiz, well, if Aspilicueta performed the previous week, there's no really... There's not really a need to change the team. Yeah, it's just that uh, Louise is a bit of a marquee signing yeah. for the defence, so that's Asp- a bit surprising. Aspilicueta is a great defender. Yeah, he is, he is. I'll give him that. Not even left footed. All right, now, probably the biggest, uh, oh, second biggest upset of the week is uh, West Ham getting a 3 1 win yeah. at, at Selhurst Park. Oh. That was, I oh, mate, I wasn't expecting oh. that at all. Yeah. I tipped a draw for that game. Just because I thought, you know, West Ham would park the bus and whatnot, but phew, mate, boy, was I wrong. If yeah. you remember, if you remember my tip, it Carlton was that Cole. Carlton Cole will not score. Go on, <laughs> wake up and check that he scored. So. Yeah, all right. Yeah, what, what do you yeah, got to say about the game? So we were slamming uh, Carlton Cole last weekend. <laughs> you were, not me. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry, guys. Yeah, but anyways, um, Southampton drew nil with West Brom. I didn't get to watch that game, but you know, do you guys watch it? No, nah, I didn't. Nah. Watch it. Yeah, so didn't tickle my fancy. Yeah, uh, Swansea uh, got a one 0 win against uh, Burnley. They yeah. seem to be, you know, impressing. Yeah, uh, Nathan Dyer with nice the goal. Player. He's a, he's he's been there for years, hasn't he? Yeah, could have could have crossed that, but <laughs> Burnley cracked the shits after he scored that goal. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, sure. definitely. Um, now uh, uh, one of the biggest games of probably the second biggest game of the week, mm. lads. Everton and Arsenal two all draw at Goodison Park. Yeah, I watched that game. Good game. I think Everton would be you would be spewing that they didn't get oh, three points. Hundred percent. Yep. Seven minutes to go, and you can see two goals like that. Especially Aaron and Aaron Ramsey. He yeah. is just another. He's on he's another got, planet. He's got a nose for goal, mate. He's he, just always there popping you, you up. You got to give it to Wenger though. Good changes too. Brings on yeah. all off. Giroud looked dangerous the second he got on yeah. the field. Giroud injured out in it for three and a half months. Yeah, strange injury, huh? Like, yeah. Kick yeah. the ball into his ankle. Bang. Gone. V- very weird. Very weird. But um. Good signs for Everton, but I think they're going to have a decent year. But they're playing in Europe, so I'm not too sure. I'm ve- yeah. I'm always worried about teams playing in Europe Definitely. and in the Premier League when they haven't got big squads. Um, now, Hull drew 1-1 with Stoke. Now, this game was really interesting because yeah. Hull got a red card for Chester after how long? 20 minutes yeah, or something like that? Not even. Mate, Stoke were playing a 10-man Hull for 70 minutes and could not break them down. Mm-hmm. Mate, um, that is fairly, fairly disappointing for Mark Hughes. Yeah. And then Shawcross scored at the, at the death, wasn't it? Yeah, 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 right at the end. They were very lucky to get that goal. Yeah, well, I was flicking between the um, Tottenham game. Yeah, and, so was I. Yep, yep. And I just happened to flick it on when Chester got sent off. And straight away, I thought, nah, this is a red card, 100%. Yeah? So on, yeah. And I thought to myself, you know, I've tipped Stoke. Yep, yep, yep. It's a short yep. bit. Um, and then I see Whelan comes off with Boy, and I'm thinking, yeah. Yeah, You're gonna get two or three goals here. Yelovich pops up, bang. Oh, mate, you know I, I know. Uh, now probably the biggest result of the weekend was uh, Tottenham demolishing mm. QPR four 0 To be honest, I didn't see that coming myself. Yeah, but mate, Pochettino it looks like he's got a good brand playing Tottenham with. I know Chris is a big Tottenham fan, so give us your opinion, mate. I, I watched. I watched the whole game. Yeah. Um, 
Like they look you, good. Yeah, they look good. Lamella looks pretty, pretty good. Um, Delicious cross. Mm. Yeah, he, he, oh. played, he played brilliant. Ericsson was pretty good too. Um, How about that free uh, kick, man? Against the crossbar. Yeah, I think that Pochettino, he, he's found a system to fit them all in there, which yep. look Lamella and Ericsson. Something AVB uh, couldn't do. And yeah, Addy Boyle. That, Addy Boyle looks like a new player again. Reinvented. He, play, he played really well. Um, I must admit, yeah, they, they were very good. Vertonghen back. Good, looks in good form again. But QPR, is, did QPR play good? I, I, did they yeah. chase? I, I don't know. I think Remy looks like a player that wants to leave, so you don't know if his heart's there. Yeah. He, didn't, he didn't chase anything. So. Yeah. Your opinion? Oh, in saying that, I agree. Spurs looked impressive, but QPR were terrible. Yeah. They're chasing shadows the entire game. And I think Phillips had a chance and tried to dink it over the keeper. I just, yeah, Rio Ferdinand. Yeah, no good. Corker as well, mate, getting up. Yeah, Rio Ferdinand, when he tried to intercept that, what was it, cross along the floor, mm. and he literally just toe poked and he just helped it on for. Yeah. Um, who scored that goal? Was Perfect. that. Who, who Was that Adebayo that scored that goal? Yeah. Oh, I'm not too sure, Fairly. but Adebayo, mate, I mean, uh, Ferdinand definitely lost his pace and definitely oh. lost his agility, especially when you get your back injuries. So I don't know what's going to happen with uh, QPR. Yeah, I think. Nah. Yeah, especially they've got three centre backs as well, playing three at the yeah. back, and done. I, I feel, done. Uh, mate, you you said that QPR are in trouble this season, oh, and I think so, man. I really think, think so. They're cursed, I don't know. Uh, really. yeah. Anyways, let's talk about cursed. Let's talk about <laughs> cursed teams. Manchester United went to the Stadium of Lights and grabbed our first point of the season. Yay. Get in, <laughs> mate. What the hell is going on, Edgar? Ah, uh, jeez. I don't even, I don't even know where to start. We didn't even start brightly. It it was yeah. all downhill from the from the yeah, get go. Even though we drew, I was more pleased about last week's, like how we played. Like at least we tried to knock it around. I just felt nothing this game. There was no excitement. I was on Twitter. Ah, uh, dude. I was on Twitter an hour before the game, and I seen that uh, Blacker, Smalling, and Jones, mm. and then, and then I seen Cleverly and Fletcher in the midfield. Yep. Bang. And I knew straight away that Cleverly and Fletcher was not going to be enough cover whatsoever yep. for the likes of... So, I don't know if this sounds embarrassing, but for the likes Come of, on. you know, uh, Sunderland's players, you know? Yeah. Mate, ugh, mate, it was... Huh? Yeah, he, he bossed it. He really yeah, bossed oh, it. Yeah, man. Mate, oh, you know, Lee Cattermall, you get everyone makes fun of him and that, but he genuinely, mate, he was a leader. He stood up, yep. he stood his ground. Yeah, and that, that is the player, man, you know, I don't have at the minute. Mm-hmm. But in saying that, Mate, there's no excuses. You got Robin Van Persie starting. Fair enough. First game back Unfit, of the season. But still, you expect a bit more. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Wayne Rooney, captain. Mate, he didn't have his greatest game ever. Yeah. Juan Mata played okay, much better than the Swansea game, mm. the original. But then you got players like Yanazai coming off the bench. Uh, Danny Wilberg. Danny Wilberg played o- okay, but. Mate, we're talking about like general players who have brilliance of creativity in them, but there was no creativity whatsoever. Yeah, we created no chances or next to none. No, hardly any clear cut chances mm. to win that game. Another thing that really annoyed me was that when we got to the final third and we got just outside the box, I saw there's a lot of passing, and I'm like thinking, shoot, shoot. Shoot, just, I just found myself constantly saying, shoot. Like, yeah, a lot of players were scared. Just knocking it. And there was a, a final chance at the end where, I think in about 92nd, 93rd, yeah, no Juan Mata. Juan Mata was running through. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah, yeah. even the Rom, Robin Van Persie, it wasn't a penalty. Uh, he should have yeah. struck that a lot. Even earlier. saying that, it, it was a great tackle. From, yeah, fantastic. That's what I mean. But Lee Kettlewell jumped in his back. Nah, I wouldn't give it a penalty. Yeah, well, all I'm right. saying that. Probably the biggest talking point of the game is Ashley Young, his dive. Dive, but a penalty. What are your thoughts, Chris? I think it comes down to reputation. Like definitely, when yep. you when you dive, even if it's not a dive, the referee will automatically think, "Oh, that's actually young on the floor. It's, hmm. it's got to be a dive." Yeah, Just talk up a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, definitely contact. Definitely contact. Yeah. Minimal, but contact. But like I said in my review, there's no need to be going down like you've been shot a hundred times. Yep. He literally throws his hands in the yeah. air and he splits his legs wide open like he's yeah. actually diving. Yeah. Like, mate, Wes Brown just nipped your shins, yeah. you know? Either, mate, if he hadn't stayed on his feet, he could have created a chance, you know? Yeah, yeah. That happens all the time. Players don't stay on their feet. <laughs> I wonder when Manoni rushed um, Ashley Young as well. What a through ball from Danny Wilbur. Like, outside of the, outside of the yeah. boot, mate, Ashley Young, 
Mate, I, you can't really blame Ashley Young for that. That was nah, a great nah. time to tackle from uh, yeah. Moroni. That was unbelievable. Been watching Neuer. Yeah, <laughs> but this 3 5 2, we'll get to that more in a second. Um, yeah, we'll get to that in a second. Sorry, who was commentating on the game? Was it Danny Mills? Mate, Danny Mills oh, should be banned man. from commentating on man. Man United games. He is... That is like Gary Neville commentating on... Yeah, basically. Part of my language where he's a wank. Yeah. I cannot yeah. stand Danny Mills. Yeah. All right. Uh, so United, one point from six games. I mean, uh, six. six points yeah. from possible six points. Uh, mate, Not when you had the fixtures at the start of the season... Everyone circled Man United first five Surely games. Top. Yeah, yeah, top of the table, all 15 points, you know. Now United, our next three games are against the three promoted teams. Yep, maximum points have to. I'm not confident we're going to get maximum points out of the next three yeah. teams. We've Who got is? two away games. Man, I'm, I'm not confident. Mm. You know, and I'm, if I'm not confident, surely the players are not confident, especially after today's result, our result at our MK Dons. That's amazing. But we'll get to that in a second. Down to the last game of the weekend, lads. Probably the biggest game this weekend. City defeating Liverpool 3-1. Give us your thoughts, Chris. Oh, well, we were beaten by the better team. The team with a little bit more class than what we've got. A bit more depth. I thought, yeah. Uh, a lot more depth. Yeah, more depth. Uh, depth in, in attacking areas. Great defence. They're fully fit. Apart from Aguero comes on 23 seconds. <laughs> but but we, we looked good after the first 40 minutes. I just think we... With Liverpool this season, against there's not many teams better than Man City if there's mm. if there's any. But against a team of Man City's quality, uh, Gerrard's going to get exposed in that central defensive midfield position yep. all day long. Um, as good as he is, he's not a defensive midfielder. And you, you could see if if you see for the first goal, Jovetic is his man. He loses Jovetic, and a player of that quality who's coming every week is getting bigger and bigger. Um, he's going to put those away all day long. What did you think of Moreno's debut? Moreno, to me, was good apart mm. from the goal. The mistake, but, that, yeah. but that's but that's a big mistake. He, mm. He'll learn from this in the Premier League. you got no time. you just got to get that ball. He, he dallied on the ball there. He should have just cleared it a lot earlier. He hesitated. He that hesitated. Was, do you think yeah. that Rodgers should have sticked with Glenn Johnson at left back? And no, I, oh, no, Glenn Johnson should not have started the game at all. Let's be real. Um, I'll be honest. I watched the whole game. Moreno was fantastic. He's good. Great. Yeah. No, no, I'm not saying he's good. The game, he played fantastic. Yeah, no, no, I'm saying he was great, yeah. Just that one massive yeah. mistake. But, yeah, it wasn't was. massive. He just hesitated. I think he'll, he will <laughs> learn from yeah. that. Oh, you definitely. have to learn. But you, you can't... Re- you, Exactly like, uh, can I just say something? It's very, exactly the same, in my opinion, as the Tyler Blackett last week. He hesitated. Yeah. Bang. Th- one mistake. They'll learn from that. First game, their debuts. You've got to expect yeah. that. In this, in, this, in this league, you cannot you cannot afford to hesitate, especially against the best team in, in, the, in the country. The champions. Um, I was going to say, I was also going to say that, don't forget, it's, it's a different back four again for Liverpool. Mm. Lovren has never played with Moreno. They've only known each other for four days. <laughs> you know, they, they, they seem to be too too far apart yeah. in their positioning. But oh. in saying that, Liverpool defence was a lot closer than usual. Yeah. It was just Moreno was just yeah. out wide. They, they, were, they, were, they were, yeah, they were narrow. You could throw a blanket on all four of them, but... Coutinho was on the left, and Coutinho doesn't like tracking back, doesn't like no. helping the fullback at all. That's why I felt sorry for Moreno. He was a little bit isolated. He he needs cover from Coutinho. The, the, Coutinho will be dropped next week or played centrally because he just does not track. Yeah. Who no. do you think's the man to uh, help out Moreno track back? Oh, well, that's oh. something for Rodgers to figure out. We'll talk uh, about you. We'll talk about Liverpool in a second because for me the the main highlight wasn't even on the game. It was Mario Balotelli up in the stands. What the camera, a boss, mate. the camera was on him more than it was in the game. Oh. <laughs> oh, you should have seen the smile on my face when I seen him come out of that van. I think I think he tweeted just before the game. Uh, come on, Liverpool! Yeah, you'll never yeah, walk alone. Uh, yeah, yeah walk it's alone. a bit early for him to start saying that. Yeah, exactly. Stuff because relax, mate. He's got to, he's got to get in there and prove himself. Yeah, no, mate, you're signed up, mate. You're part of the, the club, mate, you know? Yeah, well, he's not going to earn it, mate. kiss his shirt after exactly. one game like Jack Rodwell. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy if, if you want to talk about the signing now, you want to leave it to later. Now, we'll, 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 oh, yeah, now, yeah, 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 mate, what a great segue. Let's talk <laughs> about the huge signing. So the first one this week was Mario Balotelli for £16 million. Pounds. Bargain. Yeah, I, I told you, um, I remember messaging you and the excitement of my message was... Yeah, um, yeah I was at work. Yeah, Pretty good. Um, <laughs> I think it's probably the biggest 
biggest marquee signing in history in the history of Liverpool Football Club because we've just, signed Posh Spice pretty much. <laughs> Funny you say that because last week you were saying you don't want a player bigger than Daniel yeah, Sturridge. That was my next point. And then you just signed the Liverpool's Good biggest player of all time. <laughs> yeah, I know. But, the thing is with but you can't knock Mario Balotelli of his quality. And he's only 24. I think but Balotelli comes into this side with a lot to prove. Sturridge has proven that. What what Balotelli's got to do now, he's got to prove what, like, what Sturridge done. Um, yeah. I still think Sturridge has to be the main man because he deserves it. He scored, what, 21 goals last season, already one winner this season. Balotelli can't come in there and think he's the best striker at Liverpool. He's, he has to earn... Sturridge's position. Yeah, and and in my opinion, I think Brendan Rodgers is the right manager. Yeah. to get that in oh, Balotelli's head. This is this is the biggest this is the biggest challenge of Brendan Rodgers' managerial career. Career's oh, control. Suarez was up there. I think this is even bigger. Nah, it's bigger because Bel- because Suarez on the pitch he was fantastic. Exactly. Balotelli is one player to. He's very 50 yeah. he, He'll he'll he'll. If someone gives him a bad pass, you're gonna get bad passes. He'll flip it. He'll flip it at the, at the and that's not the Liverpool way. No, they don't play like that. So I know. I remember. See. I remember a lot of Mario Balotelli at City because mm. I watched a lot of him there. Yeah. And Mario was a player who was fifty fifty. You hear that? There's there's literally. I'm being not being funny here. Two there's parts. there's two Mario Balotellis. Yeah. There's Super Mario Balotelli and there's Stupid Mario Balotelli. Yeah. He gets sent off so many times, needless times. I remember in 2012 when there was three games to go in the title race and he got himself sent off at Arsenal when Mancini really, really needed him and Arsenal went on to grab the win and that really costed um, City. But lucky for them, they had still won the title. But that could have been a stupid, stupid red card for everyone to lose the title. If you want to take a positive... But from a Liverpool's perspective, if I was to take a positive from the the game last night, uh, I would say that this is a chance for Balotelli to come out and be a hero because yeah. we, we at the moment our heads are down. We we lost the game. We got Tottenham that, as well. That, we, that they were hoping to get to points. He has a chance. Uh, he will start next week against Spurs. He has to. Yeah. Uh, he has a chance to think to himself, I can I can get everyone to fall in love with me already after ninety minutes. How do you line up then? Oh, you play. You simply play a diamond with. Uh, yeah, let's talk about Liverpool's formation with Mario Balotelli. Yeah. Who? So you are saying Coutinho is the one that's going to get sacrificed? As as good as Coutinho has been pre-season, I think if you, if you go by form and and body language, he was not chasing yeah. back against Man City. I, I was getting so pissed off. He, he'd lose the ball, and then the ball would be five meters away. He'd be jogging. He wouldn't be chasing to get yeah. the ball back. Yeah. And you got another bloke on the other side, Jordan Henderson. Busting a gut every time. Not even him. Joe Allen was too, mate. Joe Allen was brilliant too. Uh, Sterling was always working, man. If we go back to the, for- the the formation, I'd say yeah, Sterling would be the ten uh, the top, yeah. central attacking midfield, if you want to call it. Uh, Sturridge and Balotelli up top, and Gerrard sitting the deepest of the diamond. And I'd say Henderson will be. You, you can't with Joe Allen. Be Henderson, oh. probably Joe Allen. Four three three or diamond depends. Yeah, diamond. Where you want to put it? Okay. Yeah. But, yeah. I understand. Um, there's no natural width. That's. Something I don't quite like. Yeah, but then you got you can you can easily. Uh, that's why you can change from a diamond four, to three, four three 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 and Sturridge uh, can go, go wide. Go wide. Sterling can go wide. Balotelli would have to sit as the mm. as the nine. Rogers, he was playing the three five two last year. Some matches, wasn't he? Didn't yeah. work. Didn't nah. Didn't, didn't work. work. What what? I heard a stat interestingly on the way here. Um, about three five two. No, about Liverpool playing the diamond. They yeah. played it nine times last season. Won eight games and scored like thirty goals or something. Jeez. So uh, let's let's hope that they can. Uh, Balotelli is no Suarez. He's not going to work like Suarez. He's not going to look. Defense will be playing the the passes around the back and then and, and Sturridge is chasing everything. Balotelli's not going to do that. We know that. But yeah. let's just hope he can. He can so why, what would you deem a successful season for Mario Balotelli then? Getting the fans on side. If the fans can, I think he has to score fifteen, 15. goals minimum. 15 goals. What if it's... Don't forget, you're getting a Champions League striker as well. Oh, That's definitely. That's the best part. Like definitely. He, Mate, he's Italy's number one man. Oh, yeah. And, and yeah, he, he's... Against a team like City, where we were forced... We were forced wide, and it's... The formation Roger set out, he wanted to play wide, which I don't get if you got Sturridge up front. Like, if you had Balotelli up there, mm. he could have been causing havoc. 
Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Because yeah. he, he's a beast in the box to to win a header. He'll Mate, you saw it. You've seen that. You've seen that at the World Cup. Yeah, he scores almost anyway. A lot so. of headers. Yeah. So. What are your thoughts on Mario Balotelli? Massive signing. Massive yeah, signing. Huge. Um, well, he's either going to flop or be fantastic. That, that's what my initial thoughts yeah. are. Yeah, that's exactly and yeah. for me, this is his last big chance to make it. If he doesn't make it at Liverpool, his career is as good as done. Mm. Mm, I don't know about that. I, I just don't see him. I don't who know. else going to pick him club? up? It's probably his last big who, chance who else, at a big club. Who would pick him up then? Mm. You can go back to Italy or, yeah, exactly. or Spain or something but like that. He's burnt his bridges. Yeah, he's not going to go to Inter. He's not going to go to Milan. He's not going to go to Juve. He just said he just Na- said in the interview, Napoli. He, he wants yeah. he wants to. Um, he, he's happy that he's out of Italy, which yeah. you don't say if you ever want to go back there. Yeah, and he also said that he regrets leaving, leaving. England. He should yeah, have stayed in England. Well, he's. Agent Mino Fitzraola, his yeah. last yeah. time's um, agent. Yeah, he was saying that um, he told Beltelli he should never, never have left England, but it, Beltelli was just dead set. I want to go back to Italy. Can, we, uh, can I speak on his agent? I love hearing some of the stuff he's agent. Oh, Mino's saying. a cracker. He's man. like a um, he's like a father figure for yeah. Beltelli. He was saying the only club I wanted him to go to was Liverpool because uh, uh, he thinks Rogers can can help him can be mm-hmm. like a. I bet, mate, exactly like George Mendes. And, um, yeah. and super agent, man. Uh, lost train of thought. Then, um, yeah, he said that he wanted. To ge- he, he's never had a player like Gerard as, as in a leader of a club where Gerard can can kind of help him through yeah. everything. So, yeah. And apparently, Rogers uh, actually asked Gerard what he thought of signing Balotelli, and Gerard was all for it. Mm. So of course, mate. Of course, yeah, he yeah. wants quality in there. Yeah. He yeah, wants but quality, w- I suppose. yeah, of course, mate. But when you're only st- uh, strikers, Daniel Sturridge. Yeah. Of course, you're gonna say bring yeah, him in. They could get someone. They could. I'm sure they could sign someone else. But the risk is that Bellatelli could could change everything. Could could ruin. He could ruin the yeah, whole dressing. Room. McAllister said that he could he could ruin everything. You know mm. what I mean? What they've built. What Rogers. I don't know. Built. I, I you, look at, you look at the unity. I don't think of, will, The unity of Liverpool last season. If you put that um that that whole Gerrard speech at, at, the, at Anfield my favourite what if that you can see the unity there you're getting a player with the biggest head in the world to play for your club mm. it's, it's a very big risk and let's hope that, that Rodgers can control him it's a massive risk not financially it's but not, for yeah, 16 million it's not is a it really risk. I'm not saying it's a financial no. risk it's just a risk risk to the whole ethos of a Liverpool football club and whatever yeah it. Yeah, so uh, it, this is either going to make or break Mario Balotelli. And, and Liverpool. And Liverpool, yeah. Definitely like that. Now... He's going to snot Tottenham next week. <laughs> <laughs> From one massive signing to the biggest transfer in Premier League history. Let's, let's talk proper transfer, mate. <laughs> Angel Di Maria officially, officially to Man United at Old Trafford for £59.7 million. Pounds. Massive deal for the club and for the Premier League. Mate, what are your thoughts, Edgar? Well, remember, I've been telling you for ages, I want Di Maria at United. Even mate, for I about think, two seasons now. I think three mate, seasons. Mate, I, I remember, I'm not talking, I'm not lying here, this is the honest truth. I remember when Sir Alex Ferguson was really, he headhunted uh, Di oh, Maria. Benfica. He, he met George Mendes so many times when he was at Benfica, but in the end, um, Madrid, Di Maria opted to go to Madrid which you can't really blame him when you got players like Ronaldo and stuff like that there so you know so I think that was a massive key for Di Maria coming to United because he knew United have always been in for him and United like him so I think that that really contributed in him coming to United as Chris, well Cristiano pointed him in the right direction as well yeah apparently that was that's that's what uh, Di Maria said. He, he said he was quoted saying that Cristiano Ronaldo said take my old number and go back to Old Trafford they're going to love you there. It's a great club. That's, That's what was quoted. Who knows what was actually said. But what does, it, what does this do for the team, Edgar? What does this do for United in a whole? Well, a you're, struggling... You're, you're adding another world-class player. Um, you only have to look at his uh, Champions League performance and his whole season. Man of the match in a Champions League final. You know, pushed from a winger to a central midfielder and still killing it. Yeah. Yeah, so, he played a lot centrally last year. Yeah. Though. He, he, I think he, he, he even next to Modric and bit, like just in front of Kadira slash in, Alonso. Yeah, in a three in the midfield. Yeah, there. so he's versatile in that. Um, yeah, mate, he gets around players for fun. He can cross the ball. Finally, no yeah. right foot, but it doesn't need it. Yeah, <laughs> finally, United are going to have someone with a little bit of pace that can yeah. take on defenders. And like, I don't think we've had an absolute class winger since Ronaldo left. Nah, yeah, definitely we've not. Had, we've had Nani 
hot and cold, but yeah. Well, Valencia, Valencia won was our uh, yeah. player of their season in 2012, I know, which we almost won the league with. Yeah. But ever since he took the number seven shirt, which Angel de Maria is as well, <laughs> he, he's never been the same player. Well, for me, in my honest opinion, I don't. I've never liked Valencia. He's just a one-trick pony. If he doesn't have that pace. He's not getting around anyone. He fakes to the left, but he's always going to get to the right. I don't think he's a one-trick pony. He's I, just uh, he's very defensive-minded. That's his issue nah, with me. F- for me, he just doesn't provide enough going forward. You know, for me, who's if you're a world-class team, yeah. let's say Bayern, let's say Real Juve, Madrid, Real Madrid yeah. you're not looking at Valencia for a second. A lot of people, that, that's a lot of people talk like that, even to me. like they, they think Talk up a little bit? A lot of people think that a whole 11... Should be world class. No, nah. uh, look, I understand that Valencia uh, they works can't hard. All be world class. I understand players. that, but your first job is to attack for me, as as a winger. Okay. And to provide. Uh, can a I just service. can I just stop you there for a second? You just said your first job should be to attack. Yeah, as a winger. Okay. As oh, a winger. oh, okay, as a winger. Okay. I was gonna say, United. That's the last thing we need. As attack. United, we've got nothing but no. world class attackers, no. in my opinion. On the wing, you got Yanazai. All right. Yeah. Oh, he's young, okay, but he'll he'll grow. We all know he's that. Everyone's confident in him that yeah, he will grow. And when he does play, Yanazai is um, he's a player that takes on uh, defenders. Yeah. Now we've got Di Maria, we've got Juan Mata, we've got Robin Van Persie, we've got yeah. Wayne Rooney. That for me is a, a, an awesome attacking yeah. uh, team, but we still, without Di Maria, can't create a chance, let alone a goal. We can't even create a chance because that goal that Matt scored on the weekend was probably one of three chances we had in 90 minutes. If you look at classic United teams, they've always had fantastic wing play. Yep. And I feel with the with the wing backs, they have to run an extra 20, 30 yards to get up into that position and then worry about getting back. And so you've got Valencia, who's always thinking about defending, and you've got an inconsistent Ashley Young who's never really fulfilled his potential at United. Yeah, well, for me, the problems aren't really the wingers. The problems aren't really the wing backs, as you say. Yeah, for me, the, the cent- problems, the centre cent- midfield, because the centre midfield, we had Keane, we had Skulls. Yeah. Mate, we had players that could play balls to the wings. Exactly, yeah. We don't have that now. Mate, we, we literally have players that pass it sideways, pass it sideways. Mate, that's it, man. I honestly, the I, on the side. I made a video uh, a few weeks ago, I think three weeks ago, saying that, mate, Angel Di Maria, mate, great signing, but he shouldn't be that much for the player that Man United need, and I still believe that. Great signing, world class winger. Yes, we'll take him. I'd love him at United, but that for me, that money should have been spent on the central midfield. We don't say we have to go spend sixty of oh, sixty million on Vidal. Get two thirty million um, pl- uh, dollar pl- um, million pound players yeah, in the midfield. You have to be careful also because thirty million can also buy your player like Fellaini. To be honest, oh, with that's you. Yeah. that's David Moyes. So, you, you'll never say that again, my opinion. <laughs> yeah. um, the name escapes me, but the guy, the Spanish fella who announced that Di Maria deal, uh, I think you tweeted about him. Gilliam yeah. Belay. Yeah, Belay. Yeah, yeah, Gilliam. Um, but yeah, Belay. Belay. He, he he also said in that interview where he announced it that. United are about to announce, supposedly, three new players. So it was Di Maria. He said the next one's Dali Blint. And then the Dali next one's... Blint. Yeah. And the next one's who? And the next one's supposedly a centre mid. But... What, to Vidal? <laughs> well, knows, he didn't no. say? Did he say? No, or? no, no. Uh, he said it's a centre mid. So you've got Dali Blint. He's probably going to play as a left wing back cover or as a centre mid. So what are your thoughts on uh, Di Maria? Uh, De Bruyne is a great player. I still I agree with you 100 percent that he's not the player you need. No, not but, yet. But the window's not over yet. We can we can talk That's, as much yeah, as we want. About to say that. <laughs> so it's September second. If if United's got this squad, including Di Maria, Di Maria is not the savior. No, he's not. He might be an angel, but he's not. A savior. <laughs> I think that, uh, that he's a devil if, now, if mate. They can, if, yeah, <laughs> if they can sign um, a Vidal. Or is it, yeah, a, a, a Alex Song, midfielder. Alex Song, Alex Song. Yeah, we still we like it desperately. They could that could change the whole dynamics of the squad, but uh, they better hurry up because at the moment the, the this confidence is at an all t- almost an all time. I, yeah. I can't remember the last time a midfielder besides Roy Keane like crunched to play in the centre mid, just constantly going ooh, you know. 
the fans get him, get, get him going. When's think, the last time? We I got think that? Alan Smith, when he when he broke his ankle and his knee at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? Against <laughs> <Lisa>. Liverpool. <laughs> you, you know, know right, who I'd like to see. But anyways, so, sorry, sorry to interrupt you there. Yeah. United this morning, lads, just went down 4-0 wow. to MK Dons. Knocked out, not in the round three, but in the round two of the Capital One Cup. Listen, Stop they, smoking, they mate. They can concentrate <laughs> on Europe now. <laughs> oh, <laughs> all right, mate. All right, buddy. Yeah, sorry, guys. All right, um, <laughs> you're right. Confidence now, if it wasn't shot after two games, it is completely... The only positive for me is we've dropped so far down, the only way is up. <laughs> yeah, well, that's right. I've been there. We've been there. We lost to plenty of crap teams in the yeah. in the League Cups. Uh, I, I didn't watch the game this morning, but I was listening to Talk Sport at work, and, and they were saying how the United players look like they have a fear in their play. Like if they they're do scared. A, yeah, they, they, it's like they're scared that they, if they do a bad pass, yep. they kind of look over to the bench to see if they will substitute because Van Hull's this arrogant kind of a, makes a decision like that yeah. so it looks like they're playing with fear which is well, can't, it's not a good thing either no it's not a good thing but in saying that I've never seen Van Gaal so far be angry off the bench he, 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 I don't think I've ever seen him come off the touchline or onto the touchline have you? I might touch on that uh, the, the game against Sunderland uh, it kind of was like you needed someone what would Ferguson be doing at one all against Sunderland? He would have, yeah. He would have got off the bench and he would have been blasting people. Blasting he would have, I know what exactly would have done. It would have got his chewy. He would have threw it and he would have been like, you know, pointing his finger and mate, he would have been delegating it, you know. And clipboard, having a clipboard does not make you a good manager. Sometimes you need these players are young. Sometimes they need a bit of even geeks. Fathering. Get off the bench. Go help the players. For me, the majority of managing is how you manage a player. You know, actually, your speaking does the job. Yeah, but we don't know. We can't. We can't. Mate, we're talking about Van Gaal three games in. Yeah. Yeah. The one thing I do want to say about Louis Van Gaal, and um, he's here to build a new team. When Ferguson retired, it was, all right, get Moyes in and pretty much take over. But we discovered in the last nine months, ten months, uh, mate, this team needs serious rebuilding. Yeah. Serious rebuilding. And Louis Van Gaal, when he came in, he said, this team needs massive rebuilding. Mate, we're three games in. He said he's got a three-year plan. Mate, we're three games in, and we're talking like it's over, you know? Mate. like, Mate, this is going to take a very long yeah, time. It can't absolutely. all be done in one transfer window. And I will say another thing as well. As important it is to get these players, these transfers that we want, it's also imp- important to get rid of the players who are dead wood mm. at our club. We've still got Cleverly. We've still got Anderson. All right, we've got Nani, but he's on loan. Yeah. Paying his wages. But, yeah, mate, why go? We're paying his wages. Come back, you know? Yeah, it, even United have to clear the wage bill before yeah. they break. Every team knows sure. that. A lot's going to happen over the next week. It has to. United aren't stupid. They can't sit on this. United, squad. if United want to make top four... They, I know they've you know broken the transfer uh, British uh, Premier League record, but they need central midfielders if they want top four because top four they lose so much money not just the money not getting Champions League but sponsorship that massive deal with Adidas what the world record deal for you know a sports sponsor at a club gets cut by thirty percent if United do not make Champions League next season also, that is massive also they're not just losing that kind of money that they're, they're losing. If they were in the Champions League, they wouldn't have paid £60 million for Dembele. No. Probably probably £40 million. But, yeah, that, that's the thing. The ball is in Madrid's court. Yep. Because we have to overpay. And no one and else is coming after You have it. to overpay yeah. wages. Yep. You have to overpay everything to get yep. these players in. Exactly. All right, lads, enough of the big signings. Let's get into the predictions. But before the predictions, this week's coming up, lads. We did some tipping as well, so we're into round two. As you guys can see on the screen there, your boy Curtis Seven's on top. Yours truly... On there with 13 overall. I've got seven tips this week, lads. Yeah. Chris, you got four. Yeah. Edgar, you got five right. again. And uh, Consistent. I can see a bit of a gap spreading between us, right. lads. Right. Early, Early days. Right. Early, days. Yeah. Early days, two or 38. So, uh, <laughs> all right, lads. All right, let's get into the predictions. First game of the week, lads. Mate, the well-awaited um, debuts all right, of United players. Because, oh. yeah, mate. Because all these signings United have made, all right, the only player that has debuted is Ander Herrera for 60 minutes. Mm. we still got Luke Shaw. We've got 90 minutes out of Herrera, hopefully. Mate, hopefully um, uh, Rojo's work permit gets cleared. Yeah. Uh, Di Maria. Um, so, so you're going to have 
six left bags. <laughs> <laughs> nah, <laughs> but I think... Well, I third yeah, but... Well, so he, who do you think is going to be dropped? Tyler Blackett? Blackett. Even though he's been fantastic. No, uh, nah, I think I think Tyler Blackett will actually, stay. No, actually, uh, the only reason I can think Ty- Tyler Blackett will get dropped is because he's left-footed and they want to put Rojo in that left-footed centre-back position. I think we'll see Rojo I, centrally. I think Evan will come back. I'm not Evan's too sure after back. this morning's performance. I heard it yeah, was yeah, terrible. No, it was I reckon Jones right back, Rojo centre-back, Tyler Blackett uh, left centre-mid and hopefully Luke Shaw will be back this week. I'm not too sure about that. But lads, who are tipping? Uh, I'm going to go with United. I think that the the, the Di Maria signing will lift them a little bit. bit. like Arsenal with Ozil last year. Yeah, it would, quite, it would, ha- it would have to lift them. He's a, a good player coming in. Yeah. Um, I'm yeah gonna, I think they'll win. I'll be going United all the way. United. United all around, which is remarkable as well. All right, that's second game. We got um, Manchester City up against Stoke at home at, in, uh, at Eddie Had. I think this is a quick one. Yep. Let's just all circle Manchester City Let's, there. Uh, can someone please donate a pen to the Curtis Severin show? <laughs> He's my one, the most. <laughs> or two. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, yes, yeah, so um, if we can get uh, Bick on the line. All right. <laughs> Newcastle versus Crystal Palace, lads. At St. James's Park as well. Mate, Saint, mate, Newcastle looking good this season. Yep. And Palace still no manager. Yep. Rumours Tony, Tony Pulis, Pulis is coming yeah. back. Now, no that way. would be... Nah. You don't see it happening? If it does happen, I think that would be the best possible situation yeah. Oh, yeah. for Palace. Yeah. yeah. But I'm going with the Newcastle... PFA manager of the year, Tony Pulis. <laughs> <laughs> Three weeks in a row, got your hat-trick. Yeah, no, 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 no. All right, I'm tipping Newcastle. That's so Newcastle. Newcastle all around here, lads. All right, QPR at home to Sunderland. Jesus. That's a tough one. That's a tough one. I'm going down the middle here. You going for a draw? I'm probably gonna go for. I'd like to go for Sunderland, but I'm not quite sure. I'm going yeah. stick and circle. Loic like Remy to score the win his last game for QPR. Yeah. Oh, I'm... Christopher. Now I'm going for a QPR win as well. I'm going for okay. an upset. Right. You need an upset in uh, every round, and this is my upset. All right, Swansea at home to West Brom. Free from free. Bang. <sighs> I'm not too sure about that one. I'm not too sure. Yeah, I'm going to go with Swansea as well. Yeah. I think you got to go with the with the, with the t- top team, second team. Yeah. Second. All right, lads. All right, I'm going to go with Swansea as well. West Ham against Southampton. Carlton Cole. Still the winner. <laughs> West Ham, shocking the first week. Yeah. Mate, remarkable the second week. Yeah. Are you going West Ham? Yeah, I'm back in the Zorate. Southampton played all right the other week, uh, last yeah. week. Yeah. I still Teddy's think. running the show again. Um, yeah, I think we're going to have to go West Ham. All right, Everton at home against Chelsea. This is a very good game. Yeah. Biggest game of the week, this one. No doubt about I mean, it. If, Ch- if Chelsea win this, people are going to be saying, oh, how good are Chelsea, the champions? Yeah. Oh, yep. favourites for sure. But, but what if Chelsea lose this week? Oh, I'll, be, I'll, be very, I'll be very happy with that. <laughs> but I don't know. This game, I'm going to call a draw this game. I'm going to go for a draw. Um... I think Lukaku's got a big point to prove. His first game ever against Chelsea. He, he might be injured, though. Oh, he got injured. He's got toe. I'm going to go with um, Chelsea. Yeah, so am I. I'm going to go with Chelsea. Okay. Uh, Aston Villa at home to Hull City. I'm going with Aston Villa. It's got boring written all over it. Yeah, it does. But I'm going to... I'm going with Villa. Villa. He's, been take, he's been taking it back, yet? No. Okay. I'm going to go for a draw. Spurs... At White Hart Lane Ooh, against a Liverpool. Bloody game. Oh, 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 this time last year, Liverpool spanked them <laughs> 5 0 on your birthday. <laughs> I'll never forget that. that. That's just beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, uh, that, won't justice. that won't happen this time. That was a Suarez show. Ooh, I'm not too sure. It's hard to tip this one. It really is. Pochettino, momentum's up at Liverpool. Even though you've lost the city, you've played well. I'm going to go with the draw. Yeah, it's not mine. This game has got goals in it. Yeah. 100%. Looking I mean, at about 2-2. Two, two. Two. I won't appear on this show again. <laughs> uh, I think that the way both teams set out and the way that the way that they look, just got the way goals, that Tottenham man. played, yeah. both teams are weak centrally in midfield, so I think there's going to be plenty of openings in this game. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, last game of the round, lads. We've got Leicester at home against Arsenal. Leicester playing well. Arsenal, oh, mate, I don't know about Arsenal. I really don't. Oh, actually, wait. Sonogo's going to lead the line. 
Unless they can get a big transfer in. But I'm not too sure. I'm going to go for a draw. Mate, I'm going to go with Arsenal. I'm sorry, Leicester. Curtis, mate, if you pull this off, that is a massive strike. Mate, there's a reason why I'm on top of the table, boys. Yeah, boys. All right. Solitone, so not so <laughs> All right, lads. Let's get into the subscriber question. So I just want to say thanks for sending your questions in, lads. Uh, make sure... Next week, get your questions in as well. Uh, use the hashtag 7show, because next week on the episode, lads, it's going to be transfer deadline day. So it's going to be a massive show next week. Big episode, guys. But anyways, the questions for this week, lads. All right, first questions from Gaming Ingla- uh, Enclave. I know this lad. His name is Peter. He's a huge Chelsea fan. And his question is, will Torres ever get a game or will Jose stick with the Costa drug bar rotation? What are your thoughts? Oh, well, you're not going to have someone sitting on the bench all the time for 100 or whatever he's getting paid a week, 120000 mm. or whatever it is pound. I think he has to get a game, but he won't, be a, he won't be starting for Chelsea, not ahead of Costa, unless Costa does some sort I mean, of injury. injury. Yeah. But you're not going to put... What would be the reason to put Torres in? For, for Costa at the moment, there'd be no reason whatsoever. Costa does get injuries though. He does get injuries, but the Torres gets injuries too. Yeah, so yeah, and that's, and they sold Eto as well. Uh, Eto has been sold to Everton, yeah. mm. which is uh, uh, for me, it's not so good of a buy. He's a free. He's a what free what agent. It's no, was it was free? Was it free? Yeah, free he, he could have been signed after the window because he had no contract. Oh, okay then, but I don't know about Eto. He's for me a good backup man. I don't know, man. I don't know. He 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 struggled at Chelsea with great players around him. Yeah. I think he's finished personally. Yeah, yeah man. Like his knee injury. Was... And you got Naismith on fire. You've got, got Lukaku. Sorry to the Everton fans. I smashed Naismith in the previous show. You did. I think you did, mate. Two from two, mate. Apologize well right now. Oh, sorry, guys. <laughs> finish. I, think he's a good I don't know about Eto. I don't know about Eto. Um, all right, next question from the Geordie Gamer UK. He asks... Oh, sorry, can we just go... For me, I don't even think Torres will be here. Oh, be at Chelsea at the end of the transfer window. Yeah, I, so I don't think he will be sold. I don't think, I don't think he'll don't, be there either. I think he will be sold. You think yeah. he will be sold? Yeah. I think who... if it, Like you said, if Costa goes down, okay, are they going to be relying on Drogba then? Costa they, won't they, go down, mate. They, they, who they plays up front if Costa goes down? Did he? I think Chelsea's smart enough that, and quick enough in the in the market to to have plans in place already. To you don't know. Nah, they'll or do what they did someone. last season. They put Shirley up front as a false Sh- nine. Sh- if you want to yeah. call that? Okay, they could do that. All right, the tr- the um, the Geordie Gamer UK. He asks, "You ever think Newcastle will win a trophy? Should we get rid of Alan Pardew and thoughts on the Ben Arthur situation?" Well, I think Ben Arthur, the situation, he's training on his own. Yeah. He's not with the squad. He rocked up over way. Yeah. Have you seen that photo? Yeah, but Photoshop, who knows? Well, oh, you can yeah. believe in that. Ben, ben Arthur is the most frustrating. Mm. Such a talent. Yeah, he's, so, he's got so much potential. He's got as well, man. He is. And I don't know. If you're in Newcastle, it's probably a bit late to sell him. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, who's going to buy him now? Oh, I suppose Liverpool might. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? This could be a great opportunity for Ben Arthur... You stick it out, real test of character, and then bang, pop up on the same. Do you think they'll win a trophy though? Oh, you, mm. you can never say never. Any, Especially they won happen. this morning in the in the Capital One Cup. Yeah. Anything, anything could happen. Look yeah. at Hull City, we uh, almost <laughs> winning the cup last year. We're yeah, right. two 0 up in the final. But well, the, yeah, you, you, you got to be careful because but you can look. You can put your eggs into the the, the basket. The one basket. You know? All right. The biggest question out of that but is Alan Pardew. Oh. Depardieu. Will he be there at the end of the season? Yeah, I think so. Because I think he's what he's in his. He's still fifth. got about fourteen years. To go, I, think. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I think he's into his fifth year, or the eighth year in his Talk in the co- job security, I think man. it's five years. I could be wrong. He probably wants to get sacked. <laughs> it's a massive holiday <laughs> for him. He could, oh, yeah. yeah, he could take an eight month holiday and still be away. fine. He'll go catch. I don't him. know. Yeah. I think I think personally, Newcastle would be better off without Alan Pardew. Who do you bring in then? Mate, Tony Pulis is waiting, ready. We also what, What's his uh, title again, Chris? PFA. PFA <laughs> All right. Our right, next question is from Sam Perry, and he asks, do you think Arsenal could fight for the title if they sign Cavani? I think Arsenal will be do what they always do. doesn't matter who they sign. <laughs> on top until January, finish fourth. Edgar? Uh, if they got Cavani, but they won't, uh, if I, I, the, the question is, do yeah. you think if nah. if there's a big if there? 
No. <laughs> you don't think so? They will not sign Kaka. Yeah, that's it. A- Next week, lads, I just want to say, next week, make sure you stick around because our top four predictions, in fact, our whole 20 team predictions is going to be in the show. And you're going to see where we're going to rank Arsenal. So wait till then. Wait till then. All right, next question is from MVP Rampage. And he says, how long do you think Van Gaal should stick with his current formation before he changes it if results do not improve? Well, for me, he should have... Ripped out a full free free in the first place, um, but just to fit in Dimaria as well. What um, do you reckon, Chris? He's all talk. Go free free. He's all talk about philosophy, and he, he yeah. he's his philosophy. It's all about his philosophy. Yep. You got to give him a chance to get the personnel that he needs. He has to stick to his guns. He can't just come in there and and change his philosophy. He has to stick to his guns, get the players he he needs, and then. That, that's when you judge Van Hull. I, I don't want to see Di Maria playing at the wing back, man. He does his best work it, at the front third. Like, yeah, but he, he, he play, works back. I know he does. I don't think he won't be a yeah, wing back. Yeah, but he won't be a wing back. He, well, he's, what do you he, think he'll play? He plays centrally, man. He played very centrally for Real Madrid. Well, so you think he's going to play as a centre mid? No, not centre mid. Would you agree with me that Di Maria is a similar player to Arian Robin? Absolutely, yeah. Well, if if, if Ariane Robin was, yeah, was I know. six so or seven drop, years younger, he would be. You're dropping Rooney or Van Persie. Exactly. You're dropping a striker, mate. You can't drop Rooney, he's a captain. Exactly. You can't I, drop Van Persie because he's Dutch. Nah, exactly. they, trust me, one of them will be dropped. I think Matter will be dropped. Personally, yeah, I think Matter will yeah, be dropped. Yeah, and Matter as well. Because I, I, th- I think Di Maria is a 10 times better player than one Matter. That, that's my opinion oh. anyway. I, I think Matter was a better player at Chelsea it's since he's been to United. Mate. I said, I said Jose Mourinho. Did you not watch that last month of Matter? What last month? Do you know, Ma- you know Matter's got eight goals in nine games? Yeah, he's basically. He's got how many assists? Mate, he's really found his form at the end of last season. He's pretty much all right against the Swansea game. He played terrible, yeah. but man, he was all right against uh, Sunderland. Yeah, no, I think Matter's is excellent, man. Yeah. I could be wrong. I, all I said was I think Di Maria is a better player than Matter. Nah, maybe, uh, maybe, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll be proven wrong. I agree. Right. I maybe agree. He'll flop, but Di Maria, Di Maria is a very good signing. Yeah. I look, I know it'd make Rooney upset, but I'd stick Rooney out slightly more left and chuck Di Maria as a right winger. And so where's Van Persie? Where's where Van? Oh, so you reckon Van Persie up top, Rooney yeah. to the wide right, and Mata on the right, uh, uh, Mata behind, and then you got two midfielders. If Rooney plays, so diamond right. like uh, if Rooney plays diamond wide right, four three three whatever you want to call yeah. it. If Rooney plays wide right, he'll be asking for a new uh, yeah. a new contract in yeah, another three no doubt. <laughs> he, he'll want to leave. No doubt. Yeah. I, mean, I reckon that would be happy. a good thing for United. He, Rooney, yeah, I think I think Rooney's a bit. He's a he's a brilliant midfielder, and, and he's oh. he, he's good on the right. But he just wants to be the main Could, man. That's his biggest problem. And he should be because he's talented, and yeah. he he was he was the main man when he came to United. Like up front wise, anyways. Let's be honest. You know, kind of. Sir Alex Ferguson has ruined a bit of Rooney's career. Yeah. Sacrificing Wayne Rooney as this number ten, he's learnt this position. If you remember him at Everton, out and out striker, yeah. scoring goals for fun, and even when Ronaldo left. Put him up front, and he'll score goals for fun yeah. again. I've said to you before, Curtis. I don't know if you remember that. I think that on his day, Rooney's the best number ten in the Premier League. Yeah, you said that. Yeah, yeah. He he's, he could pick a pass almost more than anyone. Yeah, I know, I know. Um, it's a difficult one, and uh, Van Hal's got some big, big issues on Wait, his who hands. Who would you drop, Curtis? How would you line up? Um, now that Dimery has come in, I would have to drop um, Van Persie. Yeah, Van Persie. So. You- Van Persie or Rooney? Flip a coin. You can't. He's I, in the long run? That's so what I mean. That's why I'm saying Van Persie. You can't, that, yeah, you can't so, drop the captain. That's what I'm saying. Van Persie. Liverpool should sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I, love you, I, love I, you, I can't see that. <laughs> I just can't see it happening. Yeah. Uh, uh, get some midfielders. <laughs> 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 All right. Last question comes from Nathan Wigan Hall. Ripper question. Mate, this is a great question. All right. Good luck reading it. <laughs> Based upon your own personal unrevealed predictions, which team do you think could go above and beyond your expectations based on the performances you've seen? Yeah, go. I'll start with you, mate. Let's see. Let me have a look at this list, guys. Um, right now, I'm looking at Leicester. Yep. And I am looking at Spurs. Oh, I have to agree. Not with Leicester. I think Spurs are... If you're watching, Uncle, yeah. <laughs> Spurs. I think Spurs are going to be dangerous. So for me, yeah. I think a lot of people have Leicester in their bottom three, but if you watch the first two games, I don't think you're going to be saying that. 
The only um, the only problem Tottenham have, in my opinion, is the problem they got every year is they're playing in the Europa League. It stuffs them up every single yeah, time. Yeah. So I don't think they've got a big enough squad and big enough depth, good quality enough depth to continue the form in the Premier League week in week out but with the Europa I think, League. I think they've got a big enough squad, but not in in every area. Like yeah. they have. Yes, I mean quality. Plenty of midfielders. Yeah, yeah, quality and depth. Plenty of defenders, but the, the, the three up front. Well, if I was a Spurs fan, this is what I'd be worried about. That you've only got Adebayo, Soldado, and Harry Kane. Yeah. That's your three strikers. That's it. Apparently, Soldado is going to AC Milan, apparently. Oh, they can't get Milan. Uh, unless they Trans- do sign somewhere else. Well, apparently, um, Tottenham are really heavily linked with Danny Wilbeck. Um, that would kill me, mate. You? What about me? <laughs> mate. Wilbs. <laughs> no, uh, no longer for, that for guy. Me, <laughs> for me, the, the Wilbeck room is a load of crap. I don't believe anything of it. Van Hal came out and he said, Danny Wilbeck... He had a conversation with Danny Wilbeck. Yeah, and it would stay private. Ryan Giggs was in the room and it would stay private. So how did it get out? Because it got out of that story. Wilbeck. Maybe his agent. No. Obviously, Wilbeck's not happy. He's told someone and it's come out somewhere. Uh, because because if it, was, if it wasn't true, Van Howe would have dis- dismissed it straight away. He said, mm. you're talking nonsense. Yeah, but he that. didn't. He didn't. Now, f- for me, that conversation's like, you're not going to be the big dog. You can leave if you want. Exactly. I don't think he will. Oh, well, who knows? Who knows? Wait to say. My personal opinion, he should be a player that we should be starting over uh, someone like Van Persie, in my opinion. I've always said it from day one. Van Persie, the transfer, quick getting fix. him quick fix, but boys are going to be a big problem later on. And it's to be true. Yeah. Anyways, um, that last question, I reckon, guys, my opinion... I reckon um, Maybe Southampton Oof, because yeah. everyone tipped them no one, relegation. No one's giving him I, I never thought they'd get relegated. I just no, mate. Everyone was had him. I think they were they were like a thousand to one, not yeah, five hundred to one to get relegated. Oh, I'm yeah. not saying they're gonna finish top five or top Europa yeah, League uh, mid table again. Yeah, I reckon that is the number. That's the team that's gonna improve out of anyone. Maybe Villa. Villa look all right. Yeah. You know if they can get someone in. They got Ben Teke to come back in, you yeah. know. Um, it's hard to say top four, it's hard to say. Anyways, lads, that's going to wrap up another show of the Seven Show. Make sure you stick around next week, lads. It's going to be massive, a massive show. We've got a transfer deadline day, all the specials, all the signings. We're going to have our predictions for the top four, mid-table and relegations. Mate, it's going to be a massive show. It's going to be drama, mate. Probably going to be a bit longer as well. So, uh, anyways, lads, say goodbye, boys. See you later, guys. See you guys, follow me on Twitter. You don't need three of you follow me this week. <laughs> Their links are in the description. Make I sure you know. go follow them. Anyways, okay. I'm your boy, Curtis7. Thank you for tuning in to The 7 Show. Take care and peace.